All right, when to loop, when not to loop. This was really hard for me at first when I got into N8N, so hopefully this will save you a little bit of time on how to think about this. Um, I'll show you when to, how to use it for throttling, how to use it for just dealing with complex situations and data. I'll show you a production build so you can kind of see how I had to use um, both types of looping, the built-in looping and regular looping. Um, and yeah, that's it. I mean, this was a little bit hard for me to get a handle of when I first started, so hopefully uh, this will save you some time. Good luck, and remember, Substack link is below. I share the workflows there, and, uh, and just join. That helps to support the channel. Thank you. All right, so in this first example, we're going to see that we don't need loops. And this threw me off at first. I just didn't realize looping is kind of built in. So I'm going to get 100 rows from this spreadsheet. Um, and we're going to just go get them all and shove them all into software. So there's the 100. Not a ton of data. And this happens. Sometimes I need to transform data from one place to another, or I get a lot of input from one place to another. And we're going to shove it in the software. Now, I chose software because I know it has a limit. And I think it's 20 or 25 a second. I forget the number. I think it's 20. So when we go to shove all 104 into here, we're going to have an error. And the worst thing about this is the error happens, and we don't know what we've already processed. So, I mean, I have to run this again and again and again, and, and I will never know, like, how how far I got or, or where to start from. And I'll cover that in a moment. But um, even if we were to set this to be try again uh, and whatnot, it, it just won't be enough. So here we see 20 records because that's where their limit was. Uh, and I could have said wait and try again in uh, five seconds. But again, you just don't know. Um, and then we can't hit this other uh, spreadsheet to update the particular row to be true, uh, where I have an imported row in that spreadsheet. So now I can't even filter out the imported and run it again. So even if I set this to retry in five, I'll, I'll never get to here. So no matter what goes wrong, and there could be so many things that go wrong when you do processes like this, you just can't really get out of the 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 problem here but it's great for one-offs and quick ones and ones that you know that you're confident there's no throttle issues go for it and you don't need to loop so yeah it's just really interesting you can even alter fields during this process without having to do anything complex so here i want to turn this into an array uh, and i don't have to have a loop to do this i put it in between and now every single uh incoming uh part of this data which in essence is a loop uh, is going to get altered. Now, that create record isn't me shoving 104 records in at once. It's one at a time. It's like an internal loop almost. All right, now for the most basic loop, um, we're going to put this loop here. We're going to do batching, though. I'll show that in a moment. And so now we can get all 100 of these and not worry about stressing out the system. But I can do 10 at once. So instead of one at a time, which sometimes I'll do it that way, I can do 10 because I know softer can handle 20 um, and I'm going to give it 10 because we might have other systems using the, the the softer workspace and that's it so now we're going to shoot it in there 10 but we're also going to track that we've imported these so if I do have to run it again we know where we left off and I'll talk about something else in a moment um, in the next one for read-only systems um, but then we can just make this work. And on an error, we could run it again as we kind of work through potential errors and edge cases. Um, and that's about it. So let's go watch this run. And here we go. And I think on this guy, let me see if I can open this one moment while it runs. We can set it to try again. Uh, this one should be try five times, min wait. Oh, that's milliseconds. So let me fix that. Five seconds. So if we do hit that error, we'll try a bunch of times and let uh, the throttle kind of fade away as we wait five seconds. And then we wait here and go through the process until we get to the end. And that waits overkill. I'm just kind of showing what else we can do in the loop here to help out. Um, but that's it. Oh, and we can also see the items are marked done, done there. So that's good. In the genre, I'll be pulling in soon. I For some reason, it didn't work there, but that's not a big deal. All right, so now let's look at uh, the next one where we're looping and dealing with a read-only system, and uh, I'll explain that one uh, in the next one. All right, in this one, we have a read-only example for in this for make-believe, and this one's going to be the same spreadsheet, but we're not writing true, so we don't really know if we've hit that record or not. And we don't want to keep writing duplicate records to our system, so especially with loops, it's nice because if you're moving lots of data into a new system, 
you might hit edge cases as you go. So you want the system or the process to be impotent so you can run it again and again. So here I'm just going to say if the object exists, if there are results, then we don't want it and we're just going to loop back over. So we hit this guy, we get 104, we batch it like we did before, and then we go through each record. Now, again, if it exists, we, we, we say if found and go back to the loop. If it does not exist, um, we then go create the record. Um, and, and that's about it here. Uh, this might be a good example, too, where if I was to redo this again, I would probably set that loop to maybe one uh, just to make sure my, my strategy is, is sound. Uh, and then I'm not batching the loop and hitting this multiple times. But anyways, hopefully you can see, again, loops pay off in many ways. In this case, I can do a, a, a create or update during the process. So the loop gives you a lot of room to do things. Uh, and I, I'm, I seem to have gotten obsessed in this demo with data transformation. Sorry about that. It just happens a lot. Uh, in the next example, I'm going to show where I had to make sub loops and therefore sub workflows, and that helped out a lot, and, and why that pattern helped out a lot. All right, this next one is production, and I'm going to show it to you because I struggled with this bigger workflow. I had to break it down, and all the stuff I'm showing you now paid off. In this particular one, that get information for software could be 50 or more licenses or 100, and I just couldn't process it here. And not only that, I didn't want to because when you're working on a big workflow, if you break it down, you can then run the little pieces individually so you can kind of see if it works and, and, and figure out what's not working and fix it. So in this case, I moved a lot of the complexity of this first part out into the own external workflow. And then that guy actually has a loop. So you just saw a loop go into a loop. And that loop, then I processed this, uh, these guys individually. Why did I do a loop here? I can't remember. But I had to for whatever reason. And then I iterate and I get some data from some tables and softer and, and then do the rest. Now, in this case, I run once for each item, but I could have run once for all items. You just got to figure out what works for you. In this case, I needed each um, because that stuff coming in is, is multiple. Uh, and then I executed a third workflow here, which just to remind you, that's just to get it out of here. So I don't have to test that in a loop. I could test it by itself and run it. Again, smaller workflows mean you have some space to run them and, and get them working and then plug them in. Like Legos, you plug in them together to make the bigger thing without overcomplicating things. It's always a tricky part when building is don't overcomplicate it by um, abstracting things out too much. All right, I just wanted to throw in that last example you can, so you can see loops again in, in, in action. All right, before I leave you, I just want to remind people that there are decent docs with N8N. Uh, if you open up a node, uh, you'll see there's a link to the docs. And they do a good job. I mean, docs, are, are, I appreciate this. And I want to remind people, even though I put out these videos, these docs are really worth reading and key. Um, in my case, during this video, I found out a particular uh, feature I've been looking for and complaining about for quite a while, but I did not read the docs. So there you go. Um, so check them out. Just give them a read. Have AI read them for you, with you, whatever it takes to really understand them. Look, you can even chat with the docs there. Um, yep, there's the feature I wanted. And then, of course, they have their demos, which uh, templates, which are great. You could just use them. Um, I'll share the template of this video, but they're here as well. So, all right, just wanted to put a heads up there.